to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I will sing unto the Lord, for He has triumphed gloriously. The horses and its riders have been thrown into the sea. That was the song of Miriam when they saw the matchless hand of God. Listen to me. I am a recipient of miracles myself. Right in this city, I was diagnosed of situations that only God would do a miracle for me. I remember it today like it happened yesterday. A mysterious infection that I could not explain wanted to eat up my head completely. Every kind of of medical consultation failed right in this city medical experts I remember the pain of taking samples of the injuries I remember being in the lab and having several lab attendants do their best I remember they came up with a lotion. They came up with soap to help me. And it would, it was just, it was like this thing would not, it was a miracle that hair would still grow on my head. God is a God of miracles. Listen, it's one thing to preach what you read in the Bible. It's another thing to preach what has happened in your life. Sometimes God allows us to go through certain things so we can have sufficient compassion to administer that dimension of grace. Some of us are too innocent. We are too separated from what we are helping people from. That's why the compassion to insist until they are healed, until they are delivered. I remember that night. I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and there was a miracle supernatural miracles I'm not exaggerating more than 70% of the wounds had disappeared what is this I had read watched videos but this is happening to me not some person in the US I have been a benefactor of the miraculous I remember a time in my life I couldn't look at this light you see if I looked at it for over five minutes my eyes would burn burn literally I remember talking with a consultant who had done everything written the focal length of the you know glasses that would be made and all of that and I said Lord I don't have a problem with this but I'm a young man and I have I didn't even know that I had the call of God upon my life but I just knew there was something burning in me. Please listen carefully. I remember watching Benny Hinn. He was ministering. And I got down on my knees with childlike faith. I said, Lord, I don't know this man, but I believe him. And suddenly he said, there's a young man you're watching from Africa. And there's a problem with your eyes. Light, not vision, physically from the television came and entered my eyes. Till today, I have 20-20 vision. I know what it means 
to be a benefactor and a recipient of miracles we're about to pray but I cannot end without telling you my story I began my pursuit for God loving him but I had a dissatisfaction in my heart I listened to sermons I went to churches I saw well-meaning people loving the Lord but I saw the sick remaining sick I saw oppressed people remaining oppressed we sang hymns we sang songs that communicated the power of God and I read those hymns powerful hymns that talked about the mighty hand of God hymns like up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph on his hands he arose the victor I, I, I read those hymns and I said no 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 something is wrong I had powerful messages and in the midst of those messages I saw people who I knew were oppressed I said there has to be something more than this we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this it's gotta be it's gotta be more it's gotta be more it's gotta be more than this for desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in it's gotta be more it's gotta be more it's got to be more than this. Listen, when the Lord called me to ministry, I said, Lord, please. I cannot stand before your people and keep advocating truths that I cannot defend. I do not want to tell people things that I will go back to the room and say, did I lie? I didn't want to advocate dimensions that could not be defended. My hunger, first for God and for his genuine fire, reached the heavens. Days became weeks. Weeks became months. Months became years. There is a way you desire God that you know if you do not find him, you will die. I'm not talking of looking for God for a sermon. I'm not talking for, about looking for him for money and cars and houses. There is a law that governs encounters. When you seek him with all your heart, you will truly find him. Please listen to my story. One night, I was lying down quietly, minding my business, and a spectacular miracle happened. All of a sudden, from a direction I could not explain, here he walked into my room, his majesty, my desire of years. The one who preacher spoke about Jesus was standing right before me the one who died that Nazarene I could look at any part of his body forever and not be tired brilliance I'm telling you I still do not know how his face looks like I was like a speck of dust on the floor. I didn't know how do I start worshipping this man. Do I bow down? Do I kneel down? Do I sing him a song? What do I offer such an august visitor? Please listen to me. Because some of you are in a phase where you are about to have such encounters. He never spoke a word to me. All he did was to stretch his right hand towards me and light. Imagine carrying the sun. Help those under the anointing, please. Light from him is like taking the sun and putting it inside an ant. How I did not die is something I will ask him when we get to heaven. I have seen the one we talk about. Let me tell you this. The first time I saw Jesus... I knew that many people do not know him. No, no, no. You know, today people say they saw Jesus. It's not for me to argue with anyone. But if it's the Jesus I saw that you saw, you will never be the same. 
no matter whether you believe it or not read your bible and see what happened to people when they met him it took me more than one year to recover from that encounter he stretched his hands and light came now watch this he didn't have to open his mouth yet he was talking to me that was the first time i discovered that the language of god is not hebrew the language of god is not greek the language of god is not hausa it's not english the language of god is light the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple listen to me after that encounter i opened my bible and i could not believe again it was like a straight line was drawn from genesis to revelation i started knowing things i did not remember studying them where is this revelation coming from in another encounter listen to me i was standing and i saw a crowd of people like this it was a whole generation of people and they were crying and saying there is no food and there's no water i said who is the cause and they pointed to me i said no 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 i can't do this why will i deprive you of food and water but I was afraid because in that vision, it's like there were people who were following me to persecute me. And I was afraid. But I made up my mind. I said, if I perish, I perish. As soon as I opened the door, I saw a giant gray-headed man that I now know to be a similitude of the Holy Spirit. He said, give me your hands. I will walk with you. And he held me. And that began the ministry of the Spirit that you now see today sometimes it's important that we explain this is please don't misunderstand me this is not a show of pride at all i was praying one night and i was caught up to the realm of the spirit please help them and then the lord spoke to me and said son from this day I give you my manifest presence as a gift. I didn't even understand what you were saying. What is the meaning of this? All of a sudden, I see this angel stand before me. And he said, this angel will walk with you across every nation and every place. And he said, his name is the angel of the Lord's presence. I said, is that not supposed to be God himself? And this is why many times you see some of the manifestations that you see. But here's why I said all these stories. The Lord gave me an assignment. And he said, every city, every nation, and every continent that I will send you to. Now be sensitive, please. That in that congregation, there will always be a group of people. That the light that came from me to you, you must transfer part of that light to them. I have not failed in this assignment once. This is why you heard me pleading with you and say, please help them. You see what is happening, my God. Please bring them out. Help them. So tonight, people of God, I am not just coming to do a man of God's thing. No, I am sent. There is a mandate and there is an assignment. And it's an honor to bring this light that came from heaven to the plateau. The light that will ignite men. The light that will call men into supernatural dimensions of ministry. Aside from the healings and the miracles, hear me. That light that came from his majesty. Hear me, there are people in this place this night. There will be wells of the prophetic that will be opened afresh again. Some of you have seen this day in your dreams. Some of you have seen it in visions. For some of you it's not new. You know what I'm saying. God already showed you that one day. You will be standing face to face with destiny. Please, wherever you are, lift your voice in one minute. Cry from the depth of your heart. 
let this be my night of visitation lift your voice and pray just you will never be the same the church on the plateau you will never be the same I bring you grace from the throne I bring you fire from his majesty Are you praying? Forget about what is happening. Focus on Jesus. Pastors, pray. Pray for your ministry. Prayer warriors, pray. Women in ministry, pray. Business people, pray. Politicians, pray. There is a visitation upon the plateau. hallelujah now please listen to me please listen to me we're about to pray as i came in i came in a bit late and as i sat here i saw standing just at that screen there was a large angel standing there right here standing there and i saw them holding vials of oil and i knew immediately i knew the significance of what i was seeing and i'm praying because the spirit of God and the angelic there are impartations the front is filled you don't have to bring people out again please just help them wherever you are in one minute wherever you are I like you to pray every grace that you know that is available that you need for your life for business for ministry please lift your voice and pray call it by faith call it by faith Call it by faith. Your ministry is about to step into a new level. I assure you, it won't be ministry as usual. The God of miracles your business your spiritual life there are many of you God is calling you a new order of prayer and intercession a new order of fastings new dimensions of revelation new levels of the prophetic Don't be tired of praying. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please let me have your attention. May I request respectfully speaking. Reverend Akila. If we can have seven of the pastors and the leaders. Just seven as you would select. I want them to come and stand with me prophetically here. We are going to pray over the church on the plateau in unity. And we are going to say, Lord, let this be a new season. We are standing prophetically. Okay, please. Seven, at least let there be one woman, if it's possible, please, who represents the gates. We are going to pray. Something must happen in this land. Hali Shalako Branda Gatosiata
all of you don't keep watching just keep praying we are praying for plateau forget about the sick forget about all of this we are praying it's a new season we are going to stand in unity regardless of doctrinal differences regardless of the challenges we have here and there they are too small a reason hear me plateau there is much that God wants to do divided we truly fall it is in unity that we stand the days of celebrity Christianity is over we must stand as one people in the name of Jesus and lift up that banner of the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord now watch this hold on please this is what we are going to do everyone inside the overflow those following from whatever nation we are going to pray for a global audience but for now the attention is on the plateau God's own state a state he has so exalted yet to come into its prophetic destiny but we are standing as servants of God to say no longer will it remain a prophetic word far there we have come to give it life that it starts from now some of you have seen it you've prophesied it in your churches and your groups that a day will come when God will move this way we cannot prolong anymore it's time to fulfill prophecy some of our fathers prophesied it on the plateau and went to be with the Lord without seeing it let it happen in our lifetime Maranatha come hallelujah now this is what will happen I will just allow one or two of our fathers to just pray and make decrees on behalf of all of us and then we will stand in unity and speak over the church in plateau tearing down the walls of divide tearing down the walls of spiritual unseriousness and we're going to pray that the fire from heaven will fall upon the church in plateau that on the streets in businesses in government in parliament from the government house to every ministry every parastatal let there be an invasion of the life and the power of jesus we have to pray for the destiny of our children we cannot lose the children in plateau to drugs we cannot lose the children in plateau to violence and all kinds of occultism it's time to take back what god has given to us are you in agreement open your mouth and begin to pray Oh, city of Jaws. Oh, plateau. The sons of the strangers devour you no more. Desecrate you no more. Oh, city of Jaws. Oh, plateau. Take your place once again. Take your place once again let revival break forth from the city of joss to the nations of the world do it jehovah do it jehovah do it jehovah watch over your word and perform your word amen Plateau, the land of hills and valleys and standing waters. Your enemies will never sit on you anymore. Your enemies will never take your lands anymore. Your enemies will never laugh at you anymore. The destinies that have been trapped on the land of Plateau shall be set free. God Almighty is going to set us free. Plateau shall be free. The name of Plateau shall be heard all over the world. The children of Plateau will be performers of miracles and wonders because the God of Israel is with us. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Now, we're, we're conserving time, but it's an honor to stand with a few of the representatives, the ministers, fathers, veterans in the gospel, now, please listen very carefully. I want to make this decree in the name of the Lord. I stand here only by the election of grace. 
but I want us to believe as we make these declarations. Hallelujah. Father, we declare standing in faith as the church upon the plateau. Let the days of fighting and division come to an end now. Let the days of ill speakings tearing down one another based on tribal sentiment let it come to an end now in the name of Jesus we stand in faith and corporately as a church we repent of anything that is giving Satan legal access over the plateau we plead the blood of Jesus on the plateau we plead the blood of Jesus over every altar that is speaking against the destiny of Plato State. Let mercy triumph over judgment. For the Bible declares, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turning from their wicked ways, it says I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their lands. We declare blood to be healed in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare, O earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Yield your increase to the inhabitants of this state. All of the over 17 local governments, I hope I'm right. We declare, let revival fire from this point spread all through. In the name of Jesus, every local government, may God raise men and women of fire. We pray for all the churches. We pray for all the prayer groups, all the mission agencies, all the platforms that lift up the name of Jesus. Fresh impartation upon them. Was he praying? We pray for the government and all the politicians here represented we pray for our traditional rulers in the name of jesus may they be advised by right people every council of ahitophel we conquer we come against it in the name of jesus father the spirit of untimely death that is eating people up on the plateau in the name of jesus we banish that spirit forever the spirit of poverty and hardship eating up the destinies of people regardless of their education regardless their exposure we declare that that spirit comes under judgment in the name of jesus father once again let mantles return to the plateau once again let apostles rise from the plateau once again let evangelists rise from the plateau once again let prophets rise from the plateau hear me whoever has vowed that over his dead body for plateau to rise i command the earth to open and swallow them i'm saying it by the apostolic and the prophetic any human agent in fraternity with darkness that has vowed that this state will not rise we release a sword of judgment let the earth open and swallow them father let the gospel of jesus christ not die on the plateau in the name of jesus as our fathers who have gone ahead of us some of them have died some of them have a few more years they are wrapping up their stay lord raise younger people let there be succession let there be transference of graces raise younger people younger evangelists people of integrity people of character people of fire in the name of jesus now listen the national anthem of nigeria says that the labor of our heroes past 
should not be in vain. It's not just a political statement. It is also a spiritual statement. Let it not be that the labor over the gospel in this land, Plato has survived so much, and Africa as a continent has survived so much. Therefore, we make decree. Lord, remember the blood of those who have died for the gospel. Remember the blood of those who were killed serving you. Remember the blood of the Matthias on this land. Because you are a covenant keeping God. Let their blood not be in vain. In the name of Jesus. We command greater dimensions of development on the plateau. We command jobs for our young people. In the name of Jesus. I pray for the businessmen on the plateau. May the grace of God rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. There are three spirits that I'm trusting will, will crush out of the plateau. Number one is the spirit of drunkenness. Number two, listen to me. I'm saying this respectfully. The spirit of irresponsibility among young people. And number three, the spirit of lateness is a cost to do things too late. Are we together? 40 years, 50 years still in your father's house. 60 years still not established. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of drunkenness, drugs, and all kinds of ills and vices, we banish it from the plateau. In the name of Jesus. Number two, the spirit that makes young people to not be responsible. In the name of Jesus, we command that spirit out of our territory. And number three, we pray. Some of our parents in their 20s were already doing exploits in ministry and in business. There were people who were heads of state in this nation in their early 30s. There is no the spirit of lateness, a snail-like achievement. Please, men and women of God, let's take this prayer request back to our altars and let us pray it. It must leave the plateau. Again, we declare the spirit of lateness in this city will banish you forever. And in the name of Jesus, the same way we are standing here, by faith, we make a declaration. Anybody who will divide the church, anybody who will bring enmity among the church, we banish them from this city. In the name of Jesus, please listen to me. The days of church fighting church, pastor fighting pastor, we have agreed that there are many people who need to grow. We have agreed that we are not at the same spiritual level. But let me tell you, be patient and allow people grow. Are we together now? When you see something wrong with your fellow man of God, pray for them. Support them. You hear that armed robbers came to steal from a church. Don't rejoice and clap and say it didn't come to my church. Don't make the mistake of Esther. Mordecai gave her a warning and said, don't you think if they finish with the Jews, you will be spared. She wanted to make the mistake of Vashti. We are the body of Christ. The pain of one is the pain of everyone. If only one church is growing and the rest are suffering, it is a, it is a loss to everybody. No single church, no matter how accurate, has the ability to single-handedly bring the global harvest. It will be a corporate activity. So whether you have 10 members, or 2,000 members, or 1,000 members, we must have mutual honor to ourselves. Do not disregard those producing results. They are not producing results by mistake. Honor them for the results they command. Do not downplay the fathers. They deserve their honor. Don't say this is orthodox. This is Pentecostal. 
Pentecostal charismatics be careful let's stop insulting our fathers in what we call the orthodox churches they may not be filled with the Holy Ghost as you know they may not bring revelation but there is wisdom they have lasted more than many young people respect them for what they have don't go around using revelation and anointing to insult the fathers some of these men have labored for the gospel they may not be able to speak well but they deserve our honor and hear me if you have gone ahead to offend any father of faith here go and look for him and apologize we are not acting this thing if it's real revival we are looking for these are the steps that lead to bible based apostolic revival are we together let me challenge everyone not to demean you but congregations please pray for your men of god please respect everyone who names the name of christ carrying the gospel every man or woman heads of mission agencies heads of churches you have no idea on the attack that the average man faces all of these servants of god will tell you some of them the attack is on their children some of them the attack is on their health while you are sleeping your pastor is awake praying while you are eating he is fasting we must banish sarcasm from the plateau if you hear that a man of god is sick and is in jute don't celebrate and say i, I always didn't like him you should rush there whether you are a church member or not i hear you are a minister of the gospel and you are not feeling fine I may not know you but on behalf of me and my wife let me pay for the bill let me tell you this if we carry this spirit there will be no room for the devil to destroy us here and let me say this finally i apologize for keeping you here sirs. for those of us that god has trusted with a bit of revelation look up there is a word of caution knowledge can puff up for some of us who are opening to a bit of visions, a bit of prophecy, a bit of miracles, we are usually the ones who go around with our small world insulting people and mentoring young people to tear down others. Don't do that. Let the abundance of knowledge not bring pride. Let it bring humility and submission. So be cautioned. Prayer groups, different para ministry agencies do not sit down tearing down people no don't do that if god opens your eyes and you see dimensions that a church should be entering into and they are not yet entering into go on your knees and pray for them god open their eyes to see that light do not teach the young people to rebel rebellion does not bring glory to god it was that scene of rebellion and treason that threw lucifer from heaven to where he is let us not make that mistake lucifer has taught us that lesson already hallelujah again we declare the church on the plateau is united this is what i want you to do after this conference i like you to use your social media handles and say a united plateau not just politically but even spiritually write it this conference i permit you to do it now we are advocating a united plateau regardless church whatever it is we stand in unity in the name of jesus christ lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your can you sing it for me Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Walls of pride and prejudice shall cease. When we are your instruments of peace. We declare this prayer over Plato in the presence of the servants of God. And in the presence of God's people, let this dream and this prophetic word come to pass. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit.
in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, sirs. Thank you. Let's honor them. Someone please stand to hold their hands while they go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Are you tired? Praise the name of the Lord. Can you lend me 10 minutes? Do I have 10 minutes with you? So that we will pray. If I don't have a chance to pray for the sick and we stop here, I still feel fulfilled. Because God has done something that is more prophetic than you see. Praise the name of the Lord. But I need to at least pray for the sick. This is our last session. We may not take testimonies, but let's declare over the sick. And then we're about to pray for the requests. Praise the name of the Lord. This is the time you now pray. Lift your voice and pray. Father, everything I have written here, in the name of Jesus, I wave it goodbye forever. Water you turn into wine. Help me. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Pray. None like you. None like you. Into the darkness, say. Into the darkness we shine. Out of the ashes. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no Jesus. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher. Oh, you are higher than any other. Our God is here. name of the Lord now no matter how we minister to people we see in parts but this is the most accurate representation of everyone's desire here if there are still people bringing it we have just a few seconds please do it quickly I'm not standing here as one who is better than anyone by any means not at all it is a privilege of the election of grace but hear me I dare to tell you that I have a covenant of answered prayer with God. The Lord left me a covenant. And this is why we do what we are doing. I assure you in the name of the Lord. That if God be God. Everything you drop here. If it is to live your life. It must live your life. If it is to come into your life. It must come into your life. In the next one minute. Wherever you are. Stretch your hands to this request. And begin to pray. Father the end comes. The end comes. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Shake a pacata barato sigata. Scata baranda cata bradegatias. Lecate pros cotto barutasia. Miracles, oh God. Miracles, oh God. Shepa cata pacata brando cotto batia. In the name of Jesus. Scata baroto soto barata. Turn impossible situations around. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us, then no could ever stop us. And if our God is with us, then what can stay? And if our God, if our God is oh, and if our God, scatter the rock of Sumer. Arise, O God, in your power. Arise in your majesty. Work miracles in the life of your people. And if our God is with us, then what can stay? And if our God.
Hallelujah. Please agree with me. I want you to agree with me as I pray with a loud amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every impossible situation represented here we turn it into a testimony now we turn them into testimonies now every barren situation receives an answer from heaven now every terminal disease receives an answer from heaven now hear me in the name of jesus prophetically i stand on this request and i declare the way i'm standing on it now every trouble that is above you i bring it under your feet now please believe it please believe it i bring it under your feet now Some of you are writing this for your loved ones. They are not here. May the angel of the Lord's presence, wherever they are across this nation, across the globe, may their miracles follow them till it finds them. Hear me? Every request here about the salvation or the transformation of a child, a husband, a wife, I declare the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. May it follow those individuals till they are saved. Every spirit that is back of the tragedies represented here, we banish that spirit and we command it to live forever. The same way you have written these requests, that is the same way you will write down their answers. Hear me. Any man in partnership with the gates of hell to see that this request do not come to pass. Tonight, we release the sword of judgment all across this city. Let me pray. For those who have written requests here, listen, we are not irresponsible people. I know that for many people, at least 50 or 60% of the prayer requests here, I know by wisdom and I know by prophecy that they have to do with finances. Is that true? Because the pandemic has dealt a great blow even to the state and to the welfare of other people. Any Christianity and any spiritual advocacy that neglects the well-being of the people is an irresponsible one. Whilst we are heavenly conscious, whilst our attention remains over the things of the spirit, we cannot be so careless as to ignore the pain that this pandemic has brought. Every time there was a pandemic, it took prophecy to bring the territory out of financial troubles. Let me prophesy like Elisha, in the name of Jesus, over everyone who has gone down you've lost money in business you've lost money in investments something went wrong with your finances by the god of heaven and by the spirit of prophecy come out of that financial situation come out of that financial situation come out of that financial situation in the name of jesus hallelujah there are times when we have the privilege of listening to the news or talking with a few of your politicians in this city and one of the popular statements on the plateau is Bakudi. Why is this project not happening? There's no money for it. Let me tell you this. There is a mystery that made the reverend to get bread and bring to Elijah at Brook Cherith. I stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic by a means that we may not be able to explain 
may God send financial help to the plateau we attract investors in their tens and their hundreds very strategic programs that not just empower a few individuals they will empower people from the grassroots to the highest level in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me there are still undeveloped land in this city am I right there are this it is called plateau the beautiful and there are no sentiments about it I don't know anything that does not grow here except you don't plant it may God raise investors I am saying it again who will make this place become one of the agricultural hubs of this nation and even Africa in the name of Jesus Christ we pray wisdom upon the government may God give them the grace and the wisdom to manage the available resources in the name of Jesus Christ if five loaf and two fish fed five thousand people then we speak to the reserves of plateau be multiplied to feed everyone be multiplied to build roads be multiplied to rehabilitate schools in the name of Jesus Christ everyone here who is in politics and governance first we salute you and we appreciate you for your courage we salute you and we appreciate you it doesn't matter what party i'm not a politician at all we salute you and we appreciate you but then we encourage you in the name of the lord and we pray that the Lord will help you, whether as commissioners, whether as the judiciary, as workers in government. In the name of Jesus, probably some of them are following, some of them are watching here. We pray for the grace and the courage to do what is right. We pray that you be governed by the fear of the Lord. We pray that you be governed by conscience. We pray that you be governed by a sense of posterity. May God grant us grace to do what our children will be proud of tomorrow. In the name of Jesus Christ. The temptation for self-centeredness. The temptation for me, myself, and my tribesmen. In the name of Jesus, we banish, we declare grace to conquer that temptation. Plateau state is for all of us. And until we all rejoice, we are not yet there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me speak over the sick and the final impartation. Our time is gone. I sincerely apologize. If you are trusting God for a miracle in your body, wherever you are, please lay your hands there. You don't have to come out. You just lay your hands. Please. Lay your hands. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, please do well to just pl place your hand on your chest. I believe in miracles. Yesterday, our worship people sang, thank you. Please burn it. Please burn it. Some of the things there are private and personal, and you can do well to set them on fire. The same way it is burning, that's how every devil that stands against you will roast to death in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are people standing here with terminal diseases. Others standing here with death sentences. I see some of you lifting photos of your loved ones who probably are in the hospital. Lord, you are a miracle God, a miracle worker. We have thought so much about that. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, even for those of you standing, I see you those standing at the overflow, standing on the trucks. We are seeing you. I'd like you to believe even as we pray. In the name that is above all names every spirit that is back of any infirmity we sanction you by the word of the lord and we declare your power broken over every sick one here in jesus name be delivered right now in the name of jesus now i declare every infirmity every disease 
from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet be healed right now in the name of Jesus peptic ulcer be healed in the name of Jesus everyone here with sickle cell anemia we change that genotype now we change that blood group now in the name of Jesus please believe it every kind of cardiovascular challenge we correct it now by the power of the Holy Ghost every kind of blindness partial blindness complete blindness be healed now in the name of Jesus migraine headaches be healed in the name of Jesus deafness on one or both of your ears we command them open now in the name of Jesus everyone here who is barren it doesn't matter what the reason is according to the time of life return as a joyful mother of children high blood pressure we curse you now in the name of Jesus sugar diabetes we curse you in the name of Jesus every kind of malignant growth around your body lumps around the breast area fibroids around the abdominal area we command you shrink and die now in the name of Jesus HIV be healed now in the name of Jesus cancers of all sorts ulcers of all sorts be healed now in the name of Jesus heart palpitations in the name of Jesus be healed now I'm seeing someone you get so dizzy you can't even stand in the Sun for a few minutes you begin to gasp it's like your breath is leaving you the Lord is healing you right now in the name of Jesus Christ was it yesterday or today the Lord healed a lady with the issue of blood I'm seeing many people having those kinds of irregularities in the name of Jesus be healed right now every kind of bone condition every kind of bone condition that has led to any sort of deformity whatsoever be corrected now in the name of Jesus and let me declare over you if there is anyone here that the spirit of death is upon and the devil is already planning that it will be said about you survived by in the name of Jesus Christ I command death to pass over you be healed in the name of Jesus whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus be healed right now and the sickness that leaves you even after this conference this crusade may it never return to you in Jesus name for those of you who are standing in for your loved ones holding their photos lifting their faces on your phones I can see them in the name of Jesus may the power that raised Christ from the dead visit them in the hospitals bringing healing and perfect soundness in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah now please open your heart for the impartation this will be my last session and we're done I believe in impartation when Saul lost his father's donkey the Bible says they could not find a donkey and all three of them went in search of a prophet called Samuel and then the Bible declares that when they met Samuel at the gate of the city Samuel said you go up and I will tell you what is in your heart listen as soon as Saul met Samuel three things happened number one the donkey that was missing for a very long time mysteriously found its way there is restoration with the prophetic 
it can restore. Let me speak to you. Everything you have lost, relationships, finances, mantles, possibilities, your job, by the God of heaven and here at this crusade, in the name of Jesus, I declare supernatural restoration. Hear me. If you have the faith to believe, I declare that 90 days from now, within three months, by the God of heaven, like it happened when the ark of God was taken to the house of Obed-Edom, it was in three months God turned the life of that family around. In three months, may God bring supernatural restoration. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Samuel told Saul that the donkey you have been looking for has been found. Blessing number two. He said, on your way returning, you will meet three strangers holding two loaves of bread. They will salute you, that is honor, and they will give to you, that is favor. Let me speak over your life. The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is the loyalty of the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus Christ, both honor and favor, may my God allow it rest on your life now. Honor gives you visibility. Favor gives you access. Honor gives you visibility. Favor gives you access. I prophesied honor gives you visibility. And favor gives you access. Number three. Now, you don't have to bring anyone under the anointing out. Whether you're an usher or not. If anyone falls under the anointing, just help them where they are so they don't hurt themselves. It says you will come to the garrison of the Philistines. That when you come there, a grace you did not leave home with will return with you. And when they saw Saul prophesying, they said is Saul also one of the prophets? Listen to me. Impartation is powerful. It has been abused. But when the anointing is administered within the jurisdiction of balance and scripture, it can work wonders in the life of the recipients. I am a product of many anointings. There is a grace for speed. There is a grace. Listen. I want to release that grace. That in one year, a man can achieve what in a decade he's not been able to achieve. I pray for you, I stretch my hands from my right to my left, from the front to the back, my God and my King and my Savior upon someone in this place. Help them please. May the grace for speed come on you. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Supernatural achievements on the plateau. In the name of Jesus, speed in business, speed in ministry. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. Hear me? There is a grace for favor. I call it the Esther anointing. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part. It says, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Esther chapter 2 verse 17 and the king loved Esther more than all the virgins and he made her queen instead of Vashti Exodus chapter 3 verse 21 I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty I declare by this impartation of favor the season of emptiness in your life Emptiness in your church, emptiness in your business, emptiness in family, in career. It comes to end in the name of Jesus. Take that anointing, take that anointing, take that anointing. Favor in the morning, favor in the afternoon, favor in the evening. In the name of Jesus. Just help those under the anointing. The last prayer.
because thou has love righteousness and hated wickedness it says therefore God even I God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows let me tell you how it works there is a serious prayer I want to pray for you right now it's called the ministry of destiny help us listen to me all blessings come from God through men to men please hold on in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who loves you matters do not say men do not matter uh -uh. all blessings your prayer requests some of them written here some of them they are in the hands of a man one signature help this person that's it it can change don't downplay men when you're honoring God as the king seated on the throne that's fine but with the dynamics of excelling in the cosmos, you cannot ignore men and rise. My life today is a product of the endorsement, the advocacy of men. There are four kinds of people you will always need in your life. Number one, they are called divine connectors. They cannot help you, but they know who can help you. The slave girl and the king and Naaman she could not have the she didn't have the power to help him but she could take him to a prophet the key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment because many times they will come in a form that you may not appreciate number two you need men of influence men who have labored through their track record to become gatekeepers of industries gatekeepers of mountains one endorsement joseph i know you can interpret dreams but until Pharaoh calls you, you will remain in the prison. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. You need men of influence. It, the body of Jesus Christ, your Jesus, was hanging on the cross there. No prayer warrior's prayer could bring it down. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea who used his influence with the government of the day to bring the body of Jesus down. You need men of influence as a pastor, as a businessman, as families. Number three, you need gifted men. Gifted men will minimize wastages in your life. You need men of skill. David was a man of skill. He didn't just kill Goliath because he was anointed. The Benjamites, historically speaking, were people who had mastered the art of the sling. It was said they could diverge arrows with a sling. You need skillful people. One skillful man, their business people, will save you from paying salaries of 100 people without results. You need gifted people. The greatest corporations in the world are full of very gifted people. Maximum output. Output that justifies the resources committed. And then number four, still talking of destiny helpers, you need gift, you need burden bearers. There are people who will be in your life not for your going forward, but to keep you from going backward. They are called burden bearers. Woe betides a leader who does not have burden bearers in your dark days. If you are Jesus and you do not have Simon of Cyrene, you may not get to Golgotha, even though you are Jesus. There are many leaders who have served people for years. But all they had in their lives were gifted people who were taking, taking, taking. And when days came when they needed help, there was nobody. Burden bearers are not looking for your money. They are not looking for anointing. Their assignment is to be with you there. Ruth told Naomi, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. If we die, we die here. Burden bearers do not stand with you alone. They die with you. This is a message already. Because I'm going to speak it over your life. There are CEOs right now. You had all kinds of people. But when your company plunged down, they left you alone. Where were the 5,000 people that Jesus fed when he was on the cross? Where were the recipients of his miracle? Where was the woman with the issue of blood when he was on the cross? They even preferred to release a criminal. There are many parents today who serve people, raise people in their homes. Many people came from the villages. They went down to university, but in old age, they are alone. 
there is nobody to stand by them they are sick in the hospital and they are the mercy of doctors and nurses you need the prayer i'm praying for you so that when i declare destiny help us i'm talking of divine connectors i'm talking of men of influence i'm talking of gifted people and i'm talking of burden bearers are you ready to receive in the name of jesus these four groups of helpers i stand by the god of heaven and i declare over you especially as leaders spiritual leaders political leaders business leaders may they show up even in this season in the name of jesus may they show up in this season in the name of jesus now i pray for you there is a grace for signs and wonders there is a grace that grants you the unction to pray many of you it was not like this when you started with god but as it is your prayer life has gone down and this affects even preachers your word life your fire for god when you started it was not this way you could fast and pray but some of you the distractions of life some of you may be children i want to pray a rekindling of fire those days on the plateau they used to sing a song do not let my light go cold i'm crying out light the fire again i pray for you anyone whose spiritual life has gone down listen even if you receive money even if you receive political titles if your spiritual life is down you are not all right i pray for you fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar the grace to pray the grace to fast the grace to intercede the grace to take god serious receive it in the name of jesus the grace and the courage to edit wrong associations i decree and declare don't say we've been like that anybody who will not be a contributor to kingdom come nor the betterment of your destiny i separate you from them forever in the name of jesus christ return back with signs grace for signs and wonders return back with the grace to heal the sick return back with the grace to raise the dead return back with the grace to cast out demons I agree by faith with every man of God here. The next time you climb your altar, fire upon that altar. Evangelistic fire, healing fire, deliverance fire in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let me make the altar call. I believe in Jesus and I believe he's the only one who is able to save. You have stood for long. We have tabernacled in this place. Right from Saturday. Two sessions on Sunday. One session yesterday night. The final session this night. And even though we have celebrated unprecedented manifestations of salvation. The Bible lets us know that every time God's people are gathered. There are always people who are sent. The Lord himself sends daily. As many as should be saved tonight is our final night until we meet another time but give me the honor of making this one last call some of you are standing on the truck i see you outside the fence some of you are in the overflows some of you are right in this this space outside and whilst you heard me teach the holy ghost kept convicting you that it's time to make it right with jesus what shall it profit a man the bible says if he gains the whole world and loses his soul i'm about to make a very serious altar call for two groups of people number one those who are committing themselves to jesus for the first time number two those who are saying apostle i have been with the things of god but for some reason my life has gone haywire please let's minimize movement there's still one more important announcement i'll make after this but wherever you are we have just two minutes for you use this opportunity and do not lose out i like you to leave your seat and i want you to run as i count one to five please come and stand here it's time to make it right with jesus whilst we celebrate you with a hand clap unashamedly leave your friends your family 
and come and stand. You don't have to kneel. Please stand for space. Just are we celebrating what Jesus is doing? One, please run and stand here. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Two, I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, have your way. Lord, have your way. Four, are you coming? Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you. Alone, every Quickly, that if you're joining them, please hurry up. Please hurry up. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Now, thank you very much, all of you. Keep coming, those who are coming, come very quickly. This is our last session together. It is a noble thing. Just, just suspend filling the form for a minute as I lead you to pray. The Bible says, there is no name under heaven given unto man by which we must be saved. As I lead you to pray this prayer, please lift your right hand and I'd like you to repeat after me loud and clear. Jesus is here. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is in our midst. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are Lord, you are Savior, you are King. I hand over my life completely to you in exchange for your own life. Therefore, I declare from tonight that the power of sin, of Satan, is broken over my life forever I receive eternal life into my spirit I receive the gift of righteousness the abundance of grace and I declare that from tonight and forever I go forward ever and backward never Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you. It's an honor again to present these ones as trophies to you. We thank you because no man who comes to you goes back the same. Lord, I pray by the authority of scripture that their sins are forgiven. I declare that the Lord gives you a new beginning from tonight. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the power of sin, the power of Satan is broken over your life that you begin a new walk with God. I administer the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Let it garrison your heart. In the name of Jesus, from today you go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please now look up, all of you. I know that our time is fast spent. I apologize, but then I would request there are uh, a few counselors waving their hands. You'll see them waving their hands, all of you in concert please move to my left which is your right and um, they'll receive you you'll complete your form have a few information and you'll be back God bless you let's celebrate them once they go please lend me two minutes and we're done I have to do this praise the name of the Lord now while I was preparing to just come finish the final session um, a thought came to my heart and it, it I was really really touched and um, I made up my mind that it would start with me. This conference is held right from Saturday up until now. And um, I hope you are not embarrassed, Pastor, you and your wife. But the Lord put it in my heart that it would not be fair to finish this conference and even this crusade without having a way to appreciate Reverend Akila. It is one thing to have a conference for your church, but it's another thing I do not know, but I don't know how many of you 
I've heard so much talk about the 19th anniversary. It's like he almost, he shelved everything away. It is because of his sacrifice that Plateau has received this dimension of grace. Hallelujah. And honestly speaking, we are people of integrity and we love God, but this continued to burn in my heart. And I want us to do something in two minutes. If you do not believe what I'm saying, that's all right, that's fine. But I made up my mind that I'll be the first person myself. And a few people who God will convict in their heart to join me. I want us to sow a seed of honor, not to the church, but to the life of this servant of God and his wife. This is, I fear God, and I will not tell you to do what I do not teach. I know that there are all sorts of manipulations when it has to do with finance, we fear God. But this is something that the Lord put in my heart. I just felt it in my heart. I hope you're not embarrassed, sir and ma'am, please. Um, I will be the first to do it. And is, this is not some launching, announcing money, no. But if I advocate this and I finish and drop the mic, it means I'm a hypocrite. Praise the name of the Lord. This man has truly stood with God to make prophecy happen. We were here, I think, in the morning after the first service. I watched a crane, a big crane pick about a 150 kVA gen to bring it here. And I was just looking, I said, Pastor, you mean you kept doing this to make sure that this meeting, uh, I understand that some of these things came down from as far as Lagos. And I know that Pastor is um, a man that God has helped and he's under a ministry and a structure that is a very responsible one. But we owe a responsibility. We are connecting by sowing that seed of honor. And I'm not going to mention any amount, but this is what I'm going to tell you. For the fear of God and for the love of God and to practice that which we have taught about honoring those who do well. Even the Bible tells us that the leaders that rule well be accounted for double honor. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, whilst you are seated, for the pastors here especially, some of our dignitaries and everybody, it's not the issue of this man has money. No, some of you are falling online. I'm not saying to raise funds for me, not at all. This man and his precious wife, his account number. But then, I want us to do that now. Some of you may want to meet him in the office. Some of you may not have the opportunity to meet him. But let me speak to everyone. Here in this ground, the overflows across the plateau, following by way of our social media platforms, and then across the globe, that as far as this conference and then this crusade is concerned, this man, Reverend Akila, and his dear wife, and the family, by extension, the entire ministry, they are worthy of our honor. And so the first honor is to be sure that at least you are able to send a text to say thank you. Thank you, Pastor for allowing God come through your platform, shelving your personal agenda as far as the ministry work is concerned to let Jesus be glorified. And then number two, please find a way to honor this dear man and his wife. I know the sacrifices that are spent. Sometimes we stay in the office up till late and um, I really, really appreciate them. So please, are we in agreement on this? Praise the name of the Lord. So that can happen immediately after the grace or right after I don't want to have to drop offering baskets to distract us. Finally, I want to say thank you to Plateau the Beautiful. Thank you for your honor. Thank you every man, every woman of God. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayer. Reverend Akila, thank you. Thank you for the trust. I thank the leadership of House on the Rock Joss, the entire body of Christ across the plateau. I know and trust that um, God will grant us grace. And I hope that by this conference, at least the narrative that I do not come home would have been corrected a bit. I look forward to God granting grace again to come back again and again and again and again. God has truly blessed us. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it.
see you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.